So hi everyone. Uh, I'll start by introducing myself. Who am I? Uh, well, my name is Shikhar Shivastav. I'm a software engineer in the news search team at Bloomberg in their European headquarters in London. Uh, I'm originally from India and have been with Bloomberg since I graduated college a few years ago. Uh, I have some experience uh, working across different technology domains from machine learning and market data to distributed search engines. Uh, I'm here to talk about some of the interesting problems that we are trying to solve at Bloomberg News. So with this, let's begin our talk and let's start by having a quick chat about what one of the problems that we're trying to solve is. So we basically deal with a lot of search queries here in news engineering every day. Uh, some of these queries are simple search queries, which are easy to handle, but some other need a bit of an extra effort. Uh, let us look at a query as written on the slide, uh, which is, uh, you know, answer questions like, give me the number of stories uh, matching apples and oranges, right? So this is just a simple search query that any search engine can resolve. Uh, things get uh, a bit more interesting when I add this bit. So now the query becomes, give me the number of stories matching apples and oranges for the last five years aggregated by a day. Now, this has made the query much more complicated for a simple search engine to resolve, right? Because now we have some, have some elements of analytics and time series attached to the search query as well. So uh, the goal uh, basically uh, over here is to solve this problem and to build a system that would solve user queries like this one in an interactive manner. Uh, by interactive manner, I mean uh, the end users of this service are going to be humans uh, and not scripts. So we will show you in this talk how we achieve this by scaling solar facets to the stars. Okay, so uh, before going any further, let me try to answer the first question uh, you all might have, right? which is why solar? So we did some initial research and analyzed a bunch of solutions available out there, some of which like Druid, Solar and Cassandra are mentioned here in the slides. Uh, we compared the solution against each other based on certain parameters like responsiveness, what is the query flexibility uh, that we have, what is the operational costs of setting up uh, the cloud and maintaining it? And then what are the analytical features that are supported? So we found solar to be matching all that we need. And again, uh, this is a subjective choice depending on the use case. For our use case, solar provided us with everything that we needed. And so we just decided to go ahead with it. Okay, so now let's have a quick intro to what Apache Solar is before we move any further. Uh, Apache Solar is an open source enterprise ready search engine. Uh, it is based on another open source Java library called Apache Lucene. Uh, Lucene does the actual heavy lifting in Solar, uh, which is indexing and searching and everything else. Solar is a layer on top of Lucene, which makes it distributed, scalable, and reliable. So this basically makes Apache Solar an enterprise-ready solution for search. Cool. So this talk is about scaling facets. So it's really, really important to understand what faceting is, right? So faceting is basically a popular search feature, which most of the modern search engines provide. Uh, it allows you to group your search results based on certain dimension or fields of the result. So let's understand this by a simple and quick example. Uh, you can see a job search page here, which has a list of all the jobs available at Bloomberg. As you can see, there are around 544 results in total. Uh, by the way, uh, we are actively hiring in my team. So yeah, that's something. Uh, okay, coming back to our example, every job uh, in the result has many more fields associated with it. Some of which we might see on the screen, uh, like the experience, the location, and many more which are behind the scenes and we don't really see it in the search results. So a quick example would be the check boxes that you see on the left-hand side is actually faceting in action. This part of the web page, it basically uses faceting on the field location to group all the results based on the value of the field location. So the way it works is that uh, the search engine, it takes all the unique values of this field from the search results and then creates that many groups. And then it assigns every document to one group. So as I said earlier, faceting basically just groups the search results based on a field. Uh, okay, so what's special about solar? So solar provides a way for this dimension of field to be a time range. Now that gets interesting. Let us look at a quick example of what this means. So assume every search results uh, basically also has a field called date posted, right? Uh, which basically just stores the timestamp of when a particular job was posted. So if Solar was the search backend used here, I could have said, hey Solar, give me all the results on the field, faceted on the field date posted and keep the time range to one day. So what 
Solar would do then is that it would create one day long groups and assign documents to the correct groups based on the value of its date posted field. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that I can set the time range to anything like one day, one week, one month, or just anything else, right? So this feature, uh, this is the feature that actually makes it possible for Solar to solve some of the problems that a traditional time series database would solve. And this is why uh, you know we actually chose Solar as well. And this Solar feature uh, is the one that we will use to solve the problem that we just discussed earlier. OK, moving forward. Now we know that range facets, which we discussed earlier, can be used to solve our problem. But it's not really that straightforward and simple. Faceting has its own challenges. First is basic, yeah, faceting is actually very slow uh, compared to a simple search request. Uh, the latency for faceting search basically grows tremendously with the number of documents which we have. The next major problem is that faceting is very resource intensive and it takes a lot of CPU when we have a lot of documents to count. Uh, and when looking at the Bloomberg scale, we have around 3 billion news stories on which we want to apply this faceting solution. And our expected latency is somewhere between 1 to 2 seconds for the 90th percentile of the heaviest queries. Now, heavy queries are the queries which match a lot of documents. And again, uh, to remind you, this is for the analytics use case and not for the search use case where you know the latency should be very, very small. Moving ahead, uh, let's get started. Uh, now that we know what the problem is we are trying to solve and what challenge it has, this uh, talk will present how we solve this problem by following an experimental approach. OK, so before we start with the experiment to solve the faceting challenge, we need to have some basic components ready. The first of these components is obviously the solar setup itself. Solar needs a schema defined before we can start ingesting data into it. The data that is ingested in solar is called a document, and you can imagine it as a simple JSON object, which has all the fields as defined in the schema and their values. We start out by a very simple solar schema, which has just three fields, the timestamp, the company, and the topic. And we also did some basic optimization for the faceting use case. So we use a special data structure called doc value, uh, which, which is used to store the field that we will be faceting upon. Uh, we will discuss more on what talk values is later in this talk. And the next optimization is uh, that since we are only concerned with the counts of the results and we don't really need to return any content, uh, we just don't store the data on the disk. This saves us some space and it makes it slightly faster because of you know non-existing read and write to disk. Uh, the next important component is the query that we will be, use, uh, will, will be using for the faceting. Uh, it is a simple JSON facet query uh, from uh, the Solar API. And it asks the query you see on the screen, it basically asks Solar to give us the results from the start time stamp, uh, start timestamp to the end timestamp. Uh, and we want it to be aggregated by a period uh, called aggregation period, which you can see as gap in this query. OK, so now let's take a quick side step and try to understand what doc values is, which we just discussed earlier, and see how the speed up the faceting. Right, so let us look at an example. Let us uh, basically just take an example. Uh, where we have three documents in our solar collection as stated here and these three documents just have two basic fields domain and company uh, this is a simpler example as compared to our schema earlier just to make it easier for you everyone to understand doc values right if we ingest all this data in solar and index these two fields solar will store an inverted index data structure which looks like something like this uh, and now let's say you just get a simple query right and the query says give me all the companies starting with bl Right. Uh, Solar will just go and look up in the inverted index for the field company and find out the documents one and two that match your query, right? Because the in the inverted index, it's really straightforward to just get it, right? Uh, now, what if the query also had a facet part and asked, uh, you know, Solar to facet the results based on the domain field of the results that we got, right? So uh, for this, Solar would have to know what the values stored in the field domain for the documents one and two are, right? And it's not really that straightforward as you can see from the inverted index. Uh, Solar would have to loop through the entire index to find out what are the values for uh, these fields uh, in the document, right? And this is where doc values actually come into play. If the field domain was marked as a doc value, Solar would store a column-based data structure like the one you see uh, in the green color. And then it can very quickly find out what is the value of uh, the field domain uh, for the documents which it matched, which is uh, document one and two, right? And this is how uh, basically doc values speed up faceting a lot. 
and not just faceting, but other uh, features like sorting as well. OK, now coming back to our discussion on the faceting challenge. Uh, remember, we don't have a final solution to the faceting challenge yet. And so we need to follow an experimental approach and move ahead in iterations. And the most important thing that we need for that is to have a well-defined process. So the process outlined here is relatively straightforward. Uh, we first fill all our data inside Solar. The next step is to send a lot of faceting queries to Solar. And then we capture the results from each of these queries and generate reports and insights and you know aggregates. Afterwards, uh, for the next iteration, we just change some variables like the queries themselves, the load distribution, parallelism, or yeah, anything else. And then we repeat all over again from step two, which is sending these queries to Solar again. Uh, we keep on repeating this process until we reach our final goal and uh, you know what, what we expect. OK, so the steps two to four, they might look trivial, uh, but they really take most of the time. Uh, there are many solutions uh, to you know go through this. Uh, probably the easiest way is to use Python or shell scripts that most of us would do, or maybe just create a simple Python framework. But then there are many drawbacks of doing this as well. Uh, you know, we need graphs and charts to get proper insights from the results, right? Uh, and we also want to easily be able to tweak as many variables as possible while still maintaining reproducibility. When taking all of this into account, it becomes a totally different problem uh, and definitely not the one that we initially set out to solve. And this is why we use another great tool called Apache JMeter. So Apache JMeter is uh, an open source software that can be used as a load testing tool for analyzing and measuring the performance of a variety of services. It is primarily used for web services, but yeah, you could test just about any server. It is very easy to set up, modify uh, test suites and Apache JMeter as it comes with good GUI to do that. Uh, it has a lots of plugins that support many complex testing requirements. Also, it is very easy to automate uh, using Apache JMeter, uh, and it also supports uh, scripting. So the bit that I personally like the most is that it generates beautiful reports, some of which you can see on the screen as well, which gives us a lot of insights into the test results. Right. So now that we have everything that we need to run our experiments, the next step is to actually run them. Uh, this talk will present three major experiments which helped us overcome the faceting challenge. Uh, there were many more small ones, but these three summarize all the findings from the smaller ones as well. Every experiment helped us understand the solar functionality better and gave us pointers for the next step uh, or next set of experiments to follow. Uh, we iteratively move forward until we are satisfied with our results, which you know will be in experiment number three. Okay, so let's start with the first experiment. We just ingested all the data in the basic setup, uh, which we discussed earlier, and used JMeter to send out lots of queries, totally random data and time ranges, because remember, uh, we are faceting on time ranges, right? And we didn't expect too much from this initial experiments, but the results, they were just way too bad. Uh, we had near zero cache hit rate. The solar JVM went out of memory really, really quickly. Uh, the throughput was really bad at around 10 queries per minute. And the latency was in tens of seconds for the facet queries. And then again, remember, we are talking about 3 billion documents, right? So we expected not too good results, but it was just way too bad. OK, so at this point, uh, we had two major unknowns, right? Uh, like Solar has many different caches. Why did the cache not work then? And the second question was, why does Solar JVM go out of memory? Just how much memory does it need? What is the magic number uh, that we should use for our use case? So with all of these questions, uh, we move to the next phase of analyzing you know, what we should do. And then the only thing that we had at this point uh, that we could really analyze was the heap dump from the solar JVM. And uh, so we just used it as a starting point and started inspecting it. This is where we used another great tool called Apache. Sorry, not Apache, obviously. It's Eclipse Memory Analyzer. Uh, the Eclipse Memory Analyzer is a fast and feature-rich feature uh, Java heap analyzer that helps you find memory leaks and reduce memory consumption. Uh, it is a great tool to inspect uh, Java heap dumps. It is also very easy to use and really, really helps you uh, see a lot of things inside your heap dump. And we will now go through the information that we got while analyzing the heap dump, uh, which we had. OK, so this is how, uh, this is how uh, the tool looks like when you load in a heap dump into it. And on a closer inspection, uh, we were able to actually see the different caches inside the heap dump. As you can see in the right, the filter cache is clearly visible in the heap dump. Going a bit further, uh, we can actually also see what is the size of the filter cache when uh, the solar JVM went out of memory. It's around 690 megabytes. 
uh, so yeah, digging even deeper. Uh, now this is where things get really interesting. We can also see what is stored as a key in the filter cache. And as you can see, it is actually a time bound, which is represented by a lower timestamp and an upper timestamp. And yeah, th this was really uh, interesting insight, which we got by using this tool. And if we dig even deeper, uh, you know, we can actually see what is the value that is stored or mapped to this key in the filter cache. So as you can see, the value is essentially an array of document IDs. These are the document IDs of all the documents that lie within the time range represented by the key. So this reverse engineering using heap dump was a breakthrough in understanding how Solar uses the filter cache for our use case. OK, so before we go any deeper and try to understand the earlier findings, it's important to know what a filter cache is, right? So Solar has many different caches, like I talked about, uh, which serves different purposes. Filter cache is one such cache which is typically used for storing filters, uh, which are used in the FQ part of the query, uh, filter query. And it is also extensively leveraged in faceting uh, when using the default facet method, uh, which is FC. In essence, it's just a fast LRU cache which stores the last X recently used uh, entries. So usually the filter cache, uh, the way it works is that it stores filters or bit sets. So if a solar index has 1,000 documents, let's say, right, each such bit set in the filter cache will, ha will have a length of 1,000 with all the matching documents for a query as one and everything else as zero. So these bit sets are essentially a compressed way to represent the documents matching a certain query. However, in our use case, as we saw earlier, uh, the filter cache did not store bit sets. Uh, it stored an uh, array of document IDs. So let's see how the filter cache works for our use case. Uh, so now, uh, as we saw earlier in the Eclipse Memory Analyzer tool, uh, the filter cache in our use case uh, stores a time range with a start and end time as its key. And for the values, it stores an array of all the document IDs within that time range, right? So let us see what happens uh, when we send a facet query uh, to Solar to understand really how the filter cache is storing things. So if we send a facet query like this one, uh, which has a time range of 1st of January 2020 to 1st of January 2021, and we want the results to be aggregated by one day, a total of 365 entries will be generated in the cache which is actually the total time range divided by the aggregation period. And each entry in the cache, it can be thought of as a time range bucket, right? And which will, you know, which, which will be one day long and which will store as values the document IDs of all the documents that lie within that time range of one day. Let's take this example a bit further and let's see what happens if we send the same query with an aggregation period of seven days this time. This time there are 52 entries uh, generated in the cache as one year has around 52 seven day buckets. These entries will span a period of 10, seven days each. Uh, and the values will be just like before, uh, all the document IDs within the seven day period represented by the key. So this really helps us understand the structure of cache and how it is being used for our faceting use case. Uh, let's take a step further. If you noticed in my earlier slide, uh, you know, I deliberately missed the search part of our solar query and only talked about the faceting bit. This is because the way Solar computes these facets does not depend on the query too much. This might sound a bit surprising, so let's dive a little deeper to understand how a facet query that we send to Solar works under the hood. Okay, so let's take a simple query like COVID-19 and vaccines, and we want to aggregate the count of the matching stories from 20 January 2020 to 15th of November 2020. And we want all the results to be aggregated by one day. This is what the solar query means. When we send this time range facet query to solar, what happens is that the search part of the query, which is COVID-19 and vaccines, uh, it basically goes to the solar index. And yeah, th that, that's where it goes. The facet part of the query, however, it generates smaller subqueries. Each of these subqueries uh, basically have a time range equal to the aggregation period that we specified, which is one day, right? And totaling all of them, they span the total time range of our query, which is 20 Jan to 15 November 2020. And they are exactly the same as the time range buckets, which we saw earlier in the filter cache, right? And what, what really happens, uh, it's very easy to guess, these small time range buckets, they are then looked up in the filter cache for a match. And finally, uh, you know, we get results from both of these sites and we have two results in total, right? The result from the solar index are all the documents matching only the search query. This includes documents that are outside the time range of our facet part. 
right? Uh, it could be, yeah, way outside. And then similarly, the data that the smaller time range buckets uh, uh, give us are all the documents within the total time range given in the facet query. So it also includes documents uh, which do not match COVID-19 and vaccines. So this is something which is very interesting. And once Solar has these two results, it applies an intersection to give us back all the documents that are within the time range and also match our query. So now putting everything together, the filter cache is actually the part that we have to exploit, not hitting the cache and being have to count all the documents in these small time range buckets for every query is really the bottleneck over here. And it takes a lot of time to count all of these documents uh, when the number of documents is very large. And it also consumes a lot, lot of resources. So if we just if we just somehow fill everything inside this filter cache that we will ever need, uh, we can theoretically always hit the filter cache and be really, really fast and you know, just unblock this bottleneck and make it faster. So this is what we try to do based on our understanding of the filter cache and result construction. We can apply a few optimization now to, like I said, theoretically always hit the cache. And for that to happen, we need to prefill the filter cache with all possible intervals and all the document IDs in those time ranges, and then rely on the intersection by solar to give us the correct results. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to fix the maximum time range supported by our application. This is because if we want to fill everything in the filter cache, we need to know its size, which depends on what the maximum time range uh, you know our application will use in its queries. The next thing is uh, we need to fix the number of aggregation periods that we support. Right? It, it cannot be infinite. As we saw earlier, solar stores small time range buckets as its cache entries, which are calculated based on the total time range and the aggregation period in the query. So if we have to prefill the cache with all possible time range buckets, the aggregation period, just like the maximum time range, has to be finite. The next important thing is that we need to fix the time boundaries of each of these aggregation periods. Since we know that the small time range buckets store timestamps, which are granular up to milliseconds, to always hit the cache, we need to make sure that the boundaries for all these uh, individual time range buckets are aligned properly and they are consistent. So every day should always start at the same time. It cannot be just totally random queries or random uh, times. Okay, so the next thing is to actually fill uh, the filter cache, right? And we can use multiple queries with the search part being star colon star, which is just give me everything. Uh, and all the aggregation periods for the maximum time range that we are going to actually use. So this will basically fill everything in the filter cache. And finally, uh, once we have pre-filled the cache, uh, to now actually hit the cache, we need to align the time boundaries in our queries with the ones in the filter cache. And so we need to normalize our queries to have the same time boundaries as we used to warm the cache in steps three and four. So these, these were all uh, just some theoretical optimizations which we came up with after analyzing the heat dumps and uh, during our testing. And we ran the same JMeter tests like experiment one, but this time with the optimizations that we just discussed. And as you can see from the graphs, uh, we had 100% cache hit rate and our throughput increased significantly from 10 queries per minute to five queries per second, uh, which is around 30 times better. As a result of always hitting the cache, the query latency also reduced drastically from tens of seconds to well within a second this time. Uh, however, as you can see, we were still getting memory errors, but one thing was sure that uh, the analysis that we did really helped us. So though uh, we have quite some, uh, you know, we, we went quite far from where we started, we still don't understand why Solar, solar getting uh, these out of memory issues. And this leads us to do some analysis once again to get more insights in the internal working of the setup. So we know the only heavy duty memory usage is done by the filter cache, which we use to store everything right now. On a closer look uh, at what is being stored, we can see that all different aggregation periods over a time range, they take the same memory. So if the maximum time range is one year and you are storing both daily and weekly aggregates in the filter cache, they will take the exact same amount of space in the cache because essentially it's just two copies of same thing, just structured differently. And the next thing, uh, even at this point, the only valuable thing which we had was the heap dump. So we did a further analysis of the heat dump to see if we can get more insights. And as you can see, uh, every solar shard uh, basically has filter cache. So what this means is that if we reduce the size of filter cache by X, uh, let's say we have five, five shards on a solar JVM, right? 
then we would actually reduce the load on the solar JVM by 5x. So yeah, this, this was again very interesting insights which helped us optimize memory. And this time uh, what we did is based on an analysis, uh, we, we figured that we only need to store the smallest aggregation period in the filter cache and not all the ones that are supported by our application. Why? Uh, because uh, if we just store the smallest one, uh, we can calculate uh, the higher ups uh, in the service layer. So we could just add 30 days and create monthly aggregation on the service layer. The next important thing is that uh, you know we need to balance the number of shards on a single solar JVM as it has multiplicative effect on the memory utilization. So finding the right balance between throughput and memory is really important. And then there are some empirical uh, things that we observe, uh, which is like the moment you commit uh, data into the solar index, the cache is cleared. So you don't really need to commit until you actually need it. And uh, it may vary depending on use case, but for our use case, uh, we were fine just committing once a day. And the next thing is, and final thing is, filter cache is not exclusively used for faceting. It's also used for other things. So it will not always uh, you know, remain warm or pre-filled with every entry that you pre-filled in, inside it. So you need a cache farmer. And that's where we use another service, which sends the same queries again and again over a period of time to keep the cache warm. OK, so this brings us to the final phase of the experiments uh, in which we included all these optimizations. And the results this time, they were really good. It met all our expectations. So we were able to scale the range faceting performance from 10 queries per minute to 10 queries per second for the heaviest faceting queries, which is like 60 times improvement. Uh, it can easily go much more than that for simpler queries. But yeah, these are for the heaviest ones. And remember, this latency is not the search traffic, but for the analytics. and also on about 3 billion documents. OK, so the key takeaways uh, from this talk, uh, which I think will really help you reach your goals faster, is that experimentation is the key. The more you experiment and play around uh, with things, the better you uh, the better you can innovate uh, and find solutions to reach your goal. And I cannot stress enough uh, how important it is to have a robust testing system. Uh, we use JMeter to quickly validate the findings of our experiments and decide the direction instead of spending too much time on the wrong things. And yeah, always keep an eye uh, for awesome tools out there. The reverse engineering from heap dump all the way uh, to understanding the filter cache functionality was only made possible because of Eclipse memory analyzing. And be prepared to dig deep and deeper all the way to the root of something. It gives you so much insight, which might not be applicable immediately, uh, but helps you understand ways to reach your goals faster. And then the final thing is you should really iterate fast. Uh, this is the model that we followed and it really, really helped us. With this, I would like to conclude this talk. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for your time. And as I mentioned earlier, we are actively hiring in our team. So do reach out to me if you're interested. Uh, thank you. And I'm ready to take questions. Yes, lovely talk. We have a couple questions for you in queue. Uh, the first one is, do you have experience using nested facet queries in the JSON facet API? Any tips or tricks uh, that you could pass along? Uh, yeah, so we actually did investigate quite a bit about how to optimize our query, which were JSON facet queries. And one of those things were actually nested facet queries as well. Uh, we also did quite deep inside the solar code to understand if there are ways to optimize it. Uh, but what we found, found so we thought that you know if, if the level of nesting, uh, the heavy part is inside or it's on the outer layer, it might affect the performance, but it really doesn't. Uh, so as of now, I don't think I have very valuable insight into how you can optimize it. Uh, yeah, it just works uh, pretty well, uh, I think. Awesome. Um, second question for you is, did you consider allocating allocation profiling options like JFR instead of the out of memory heat dumps? Uh, no, not really. Uh, so to be honest, uh, we didn't even think about uh, analyzing heat dumps. It was the last thing which we did out of frustration because, you know, we, we tried reading solar code and we tried uh, you know going to blogs and you know reading stuff researching stuff and in the end when we were frustrated not able to find any answer we just thought okay let's try this so yeah maybe uh, this idea is a very good idea and we maybe if i do it all over again i can definitely try doing this but we didn't yeah that's fair there's only so much time in each iteration cycle right you have to be pretty ruthless with figuring out what, what's going in each one um a third question for you is did did the team consider uh decomposing timestamps into kind of more rougher buckets they give year year month year month day um and then kind of using that in in the standard term faceting 
sorry. So when you say uh, year, year, month, day, does it mean like all the aggregation periods as we talked about, uh, or something different? I, I think they're referencing pre-constructing uh, almost like a, a keyword. I know that's not the that's not the solar thing, but pre-constructing the actual timestamp down into one of those buckets. So you add a year field, you add a field for year month, add a field for year month day, okay. and then use those um, like a standard term aggregation you would, and 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 like the facet you showed for category or something like that. Yeah, actually, we didn't really uh, think in that direction at all. Uh, so the way we started is that. Uh, so we just basically wanted the counts uh, with all the news stories that we have at Bloomberg, right? And we wanted it to be exactly as the news schema for solar that we have. Right. And we didn't really want to modify it too much. We, we tried to have solutions uh, with, which would use the same schema as we have for our other news uh, systems. So yeah, no. Yeah, that makes sense. And you guys are in an analytics situation too, where the buckets might, you might want to reshake up what yeah. the buckets are on the fly as questions yep. come up. Um,